How is M&A doing? How, how fast are, are the deals coming in? Well, the levels of M&A remain very high by historical standards. Uh, uh, and they, they might be slightly lower than two years ago, but just a touch. But fundamentally, by long-term historical standards, they're, they're very high. And it's not surprising because the underlying fundamentals, as you just pointed out, business confidence, but also the level of interest rates, the availability of credit, the level of stock prices, are all uh, just where you'd want them to be if all you cared about in the world was M&A. So the fundamentals from an M&A point of view are really excellent, and that's manifested in the levels of M&A. When you come to the C-suite, is there any shaking of confidence at all because this administration has really said no to several deals now? I mean, most recently, the Broadcom Qualcomm deal under CFIUS. And by the way, that's not the only one that they've stopped under CFIUS. We have a list I think we can put up of several pretty substantial deals, although Broadcom Qualcomm would be way off the charts at $117 billion. But then you also have antitrust challenge. We just had Monsanto and Bayer yesterday. Our, our CEO is starting to say, wait a second, we may have a tough time getting our deal through. Well, I think, it, it, David, it's a case-by-case <clears throat> -case situation. Uh, and let me just say, full disclosure, we, uh, our firm uh, has been and remains an advisor to Qualcomm. I'm personally uh, involved in that, so I don't want to comment specifically on Qualcomm. But <clears throat> um, it's very much case-by-case. -case. Most mergers don't carry regulatory risk, whether it's antitrust risk or other regulatory risk, and, and aren't affected by any of those concerns. I mean, I would say, maybe 95 percent uh, of mergers in terms of the number of deals, I'm not talking about the dollar volume, just don't carry any regulatory risk. Uh, having said that, uh, any trust risk is higher, uh, mm -hmm. seen as higher as than it was two years ago or four years ago or six years ago. Um, and the ATT Time, Time Warner case is being watched very widely uh, uh, as, a, as a harbinger or a bellwether in that regard. Um, so there are certain big situations, you just mentioned Monsanto Bayer, at t Time Warner, which get a lot of attention and which obviously are, are uncertain from a regulatory point of view. But most transactions don't carry that. And maybe particularly at t Time Warner because most antitrust lawyers would have thought that would not be a problem. It's a vertical integration. Right, right. And so does it lend some uncertainty? We just don't know where the Justice Department is. Well, <clears throat> yes, I think if, if, we had a, if we had a perfect measure of of antitrust risk, that risk would be at a relatively high level by, by standards of the last few years. Um, uh, but it's not at gigantic levels, and as I just said, most transactions just don't mm -hmm. carry that risk. Uh, but if you're talking about really big things, like Monsanto Bayer, uh, and, and intra-industry combinations like that, uh, I think people are a little more cautious than they were, yes, a year or two ago, but again, it's not affecting most deals, and if it was, you wouldn't see M&A levels at the high levels. You wouldn't see M&A proceeding at the high levels mm -hmm. that it is proceeding at.